Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate Weapon Tutorial. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at the Longsword. Now the Longsword is a really good weapon. It has really long reach, fast attacks, a simple set of combos, but like a lot of the weapons in this game, it does take a lot to master. The Longsword is also really mobile, which also makes this weapon great for evading some attacks. And thanks to the Spirit Gauge, you can also do massive damage with this weapon, but I'll cover that in just a second. Also, do be mindful that if you are using this weapon online, because of its long reach, it does have a tendency to trip up your teammates, which won't go down very well if you're in the middle of hunting a monster. So do be mindful of your spacing and do try and sort of space yourself out and don't necessarily stand next to someone when you unleash a massive wide attack like that. Otherwise, you're going to make your teammates pretty angry. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's cover the basic attacks. So firstly, if your weapon is sheathed and you run forward and press X, you will do a downward slice like that. You can also replicate that by standing still and pressing X. You do move forward slightly so you can use it to close the gap a little bit, but given the fact that your longsword is pretty long anyway, you're probably going to be within range. You can then chain two of these together, so you can do one overhead slice followed by a second one. And then if you press A, you'll do a forward stab. Now you can chain these all together, so you can go overhead slice, stab, upward slice, like that. The upward slice obviously does hit quite high, so is useful for hitting monsters in the face. And you can then do two overhead slices if you want to. One, two, forward slice, upward slice. Do note if you're doing double overhead slices, the second one doesn't do quite as much damage, but it is still useful if you can get it in just for that extra hit. As you may have just noticed as well, you can also roll out after any of your attacks. So you land an attack and press A to roll to the side. This way allows you to get out of any part of your combo. So should a monster be charging towards you, then never feel like you're locked in. So if you tie all those together, your basic chain will be X, X, A, X, X, A, X, X, A, X. X and onwards like that. But obviously that is just your basic bread and butter combo. There's a lot more to this weapon. First up, if you press X and A together, you'll do what's known as a fade slash. This will slash forward and will also hop you backwards. So this is not only an attack, but it's also an evade. If you see a monster charging towards you, you can hop backwards and also potentially hit them in the face. Obviously you don't necessarily want to jump backwards if you're being charged at because unless the monster's about to be staggered, you're still going to get hit anyway. But instead, if you think of something like a monster's tail swipe and they're spinning around, hop backwards and you can just put yourself out of range. You can also perform this fade slash after any move in your combo. So for example, I can do a downward slice, then a fade slash. Or I could do a downward slice, a stab, and then a fade slash. Or do the full thing, down, stab, up, fade slash. So as you can probably begin to see, you can either roll out of all your moves or use a fade slash. And at any point, you're putting yourself out of the range of the monster. You can also change the direction that you hop during a fade slash if you hold a directional input when you press it. So for example, if I run forward, land my X attack, then go into a fade slash and hold left. I will then jump to the left. And similarly, if I do that again, hold right, I'll jump to the right. And again, that goes for any part in your combo, so I can just do a forward stab, then a face slash, and I can go sideways again. Now, something that's new to Monster Hunter 4 is the ability to follow a fade slash with a roundhouse slash like that. The great thing about this is it also moves you forward, so if you are using a fade slash and you jump backwards, you can then use the follow-up roundhouse attack to get yourself back in. In order to perform this, you simply press R after your fade slash. So X and A together does a fade slash, and then R will do your forward roundhouse. You can also use the directional input to slightly change the direction of this attack. So if I don't press anything at all, I do a fade slash and then I press R, I'll go straight forward. But then if I do a fade slash, press R and right on the D-pad, you'll see I move to the right slightly. So again, you can use this if you need to reposition yourself. Now if you're standing still and you press R, then you'll do what is known as a spirit slash. However, right now you don't actually have any spirit meter, so we'll go over that in just a second. But for the time being, that move itself without meter isn't actually that powerful, so you probably wouldn't use it too much. But in the interest of telling you all the moves, that is another option. And as with all the other moves, you can also combo into this at any point during your combo. Like so. Lastly, if you want to, you can also follow up the roundhouse slash after the fade slash with an X attack to do an upward slice. So if we go fade, roundhouse, and it press X to do an upward slice, then you can also do that. That upward slice is slightly different to your regular one, however, because you can't go into your regular X and A combo after that. Instead, you can combo back into Fade Slice. So you can go Fade, Roundhouse, X, Fade, Roundhouse, X. Now, just before I get onto the Spirit Gauge, it's also worth noting that all Longsword attacks have what is known as Super Armor. That basically means if you incur small damage or wind pressure whilst doing an attack, you won't get tripped up. So you continue to attack through small things like that. So now let's move on to the Spirit Gauge, because this is going to form a massive part of your Longsword strategy. It is arguably how you're going to be dealing most of your damage. So first up, attacks will build your meter. So if I attack anything like this, for example, you see that at the top, my meter starts to fill. Obviously, this is quite a weak enemy, so I'm probably not going to be able to fill it up with this. But as you can see, each of my attacks in my combo do fill up the meter. 
It is also worth noting, whilst I'm running to the boss, that if you don't land any attacks for a little period of time, then your spirit gauge does deplete, so it is obviously in your interest to stay in combat as much as possible. So if you look at the top of the screen now, you'll see that my spirit gauge bar is full and it's also flashing. This will stay like this for 30 seconds, and all whilst in this stage, I'm actually getting a 5% damage increase. With my weapon out in this phase, if I then press R, you'll see I do a spirit slash. I can then press R twice to do a second hit. I can then press R three times to do a third hit, like so. And if I press R a fourth time, one, two, three, four, I'll do a wide roundhouse slash like that, and this will end up with me putting my weapon away. And it's that last move which is arguably the most important. Now if I connect with the fourth and final spirit slash, like so, you'll see that my meter begins to glow white. Now whilst in this state, I have a 5% increase to my damage. You'll also notice that your weapon glows the same colour as your gauge. So right now it's glowing white, but if you then go and land another final spirit slash, you'll notice that your gauge then turns yellow. Similarly, my blade is also glowing yellow. In this state, I now have a 10% increase to my attack. However, there is one more tier. If you then land the final attack, your blade will go red. And at this point, you have a whopping 30% increase to your damage. This is massive, and this, my friends, is how you're going to be doing most of your damage. Now just as a quick tip, if you are finding it difficult to do the complete spirit combo without the monster moving, then you can actually do it after a fade slash. If you press X and A to do your fade slash and then press R straight after, you'll skip the first part of the spirit combo and that will allow you to get to the final slash that much sooner, which should help you land that all important final attack. Also, it's not something you'll actually notice on this weapon, but some weapons you get later on in the game will even change their appearance when your gauge is glowing, which is pretty cool. And that, my friends, is pretty much everything you need to know about the longsword. So, hope you found this helpful, and as always, if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that like button down below. It does really help us out, and obviously don't forget to subscribe for daily gaming videos and much more Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate coverage. It's not long now until the game comes out, so be sure to keep it locked to the channel because I've got plenty of Monster Hunter coverage, not just weapon guides. So if you want to know about the game, then this is the place to be. So thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.